All right, so, so far we've been looking at our E0 cell when this our voltaic cells are operating at standard conditions. So what if this voltaic cell is not at standard conditions? Well, standard conditions, remember, is typically 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of pressure, and concentrations of one molar. Temperature and pressure, you know, typically our labs are around 25 degrees Celsius or very close to it, and our pressures are very close to one atmosphere. So the easiest thing to manipulate is the concentration of our solutions that are in the voltaic cells. And so that's what we're really going to focus on. How does our changing of concentration affect our cell voltage? When a cell is at standard conditions and our solution concentrations are both one molar, then our cell potential, our E cell, is the same as our standard cell potential. Well now from thermochemistry we remember that if our reaction is not at standard conditions we have a little fudge factor of changing from delta G naught to delta G. And now we've been looking at some expressions of delta G with our electrochem cells. Negative N F E naught cell is equal to delta G naught. So if we remove the standard conditions, our delta G is equal to NF, negative NF E cell, regular E cell. So with a little plug-in and chug-in, you can see here that this is our delta G, this is our delta G naught, and so we are able to bring in our E naught cell, bring in our, our cell potential to this whole thing about um, Q. And remember our Q expression is looking at where is this reaction in compared to our equilibrium. And so now we have a situation where we can tie in wh what our cell voltage is compared to our reaction conditions. So if I rearrange this, I end up with what's known as the Nernst equation named after Mr. Nernst, who earned a Nobel Peace Prize for his work in chemistry. I believe he create, or came up with the third law of thermodynamics for which he won the prize for. But here you see that our cell potential is going to be equal to our E0 cell potential, again with a little fudge factor. And that fudge factor involves Q. And so yes, we can plug in our R, T, and F again and switch to the common log. And this is another form of the equation that you might see. It's a little more user-friendly. And so we end up with that expression, again, log of Q, not natural log of Q. And this is why we see at standard conditions that our E cell is equal to our E naught cell. Because Q is equal to 1 at standard conditions. And log of 1 is 0. So this whole fudge factor goes away, and our E cell is equal to E naught cell. So how does our cell potential change compared to our standard when the cell is not at those standard conditions? Well, as a voltaic cell proceeds, the cell voltage is actually decreasing until equilibrium is reached. Essentially because if you think of like our cell potentials as on a number line, the absolute value, the difference between our potentials is decreasing. And when we reach equilibrium, the cell voltage actually becomes zero. And you can see that experimentally, but you can also see that through the Nernst equation. And so here we see the Nernst equation, and we know that our E naught cell is equal to 0 0.0592 over N log of K. That's how we found our equilibrium constant. So if I plug that expression into the Nernst equation, Q and K are equal at equilibrium. And so they would just subtract each other out, making our cell voltage zero. So again, instead of just saying our cell voltage is zero at equilibrium, that explains it a little. So in summary, when Q is equal to 1, that means we are at standard cell potential. And so our E cell is going to be equal to our E naught cell. Well, when Q is greater than 1, remember for our thermodynamically favored voltaic cells, our equilibrium constants are quite large. Products are very favored. So when Q is greater than 1, that means our reaction is heading towards equilibrium, meaning we're going to have more products than reactants. And so our cell voltage is going to start dropping. 
because again, when it reaches equilibrium, it hits zero. Vice versa, when Q is less than one, the reaction is farther away from said equilibrium. There are more reactants than our products, and so our cell voltage is greater than our E naught cell for those conditions. So here you see a question. What is the cell potential of the following voltaic cell at 25 degrees Celsius? We still like to mention 25 degrees Celsius just because that's the happy land that these numbers work at. And it gives you our E naught cell. It's important that you write out the reaction because even though here we can see kind of easily that N equals 3, sometimes when given the cell notation we'll have to balance the equation. And that's important because our Q expression, remember, is just like our K expression. So for this reaction, it's our products, concentration of the aluminum ion, divided by reactants, concentration of the iron ion. Remember, our solids are not included in our equilibrium or Q expression. So if I had to balance that equation, you know, let's say there had to be a 2 here, then remember I would have to square that in my Q expression. So that's why, besides just finding N, I think that's why it's important to write out the reaction. So now when I plug in my values of my concentrations, I see that I have a Q value of 10,000. And so now I have everything I need to plug and chug in my Nernst equation. So to find the cell voltage, I simply take the E naught of the cell that was given to me. If it wasn't given to you, you simply use your potentials and calculate it. 0 0.0592 over 3 times log of 10,000. And when it's all said and done, we see that the cell voltage has decreased. And it has done so, not by a lot, but a decent amount. So it goes from being 1.62 down to 1.54. And yes, I should have that as volts, of course. So we can see that our cell potential does, in fact, depend on the concentration of ions or gas pressures. And so if we have these cell potentials, we can easily also or figure out the ion concentrations. And this is pretty much how our pH meter works. And you can see a little picture here of our vernier probe. And, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on this, but essentially you have an electrode, and we've got a nice... Um, pH sensing glass membrane and essentially when you put that into a solution it recognizes the cell potential difference and then a little program in your lab quest changes that to a pH value for you but I don't want to get too involved with that I just want to see you to see um, how you could in fact calculate the concentration of a cell solution when given enough information so here we have a zinc nickel cell and they give to us both E naught and E cell. And so we have both of those values for uh, the plug and chug for the Nernst. Also, I think you can see plus 2, plus 2, that our N value is equal to 2. And so we have that. So all we need is Q. Well, my Q expression is going to be zinc over nickel. Remember, and it, it, if, you're, if you can't see that right away, write the reaction out. The zinc ion is a product, the nickel ion is a reactant. And I am told that my zinc solution is one molar. You should be, have to be told one of those concentrations. So now that I know my Q expression, let's go ahead and find what it is mathematically. So I plug in my numbers, 0.34 for E cell, 0.53 for E naught cell, put the 2 in over the or under the 0 0.0592, and then I start doing some cleaning. 0 0.0592 divided by 2 is 0 0.0296. Now I can subtract the 0.53 from both sides. So negative 0.19 equals negative 0 0.0296 log of Q. Divide so I can just get log of Q by itself. So I end up with 6.42 equals log of Q. And so I'll take the anti-log of that, and that will be Q, which I saw up here is 1 over the concentration of nickel. 
So when I plug that into my calculator, 10 to the 6.42, and then I just simply have to take the reciprocal to end up with my nickel concentration. So I end up with 3.8 times 10 to the negative seventh molar. Does that make sense? The cell voltage has dropped, okay, from 0.53 to 0.34. That means my reaction has gone towards equilibrium. So that means I should have a greater concentration of products than reactants. So yes, my zinc is one molar, my nickel is 10 to the negative seventh, 3.8 times 10 to the negative seventh. So that does make sense. All right, hope this helps. See you soon.